Welcome to Feminine Roadmap Podcast. I'm your host, Gina Farrar. Each week, I bring you an inspiring conversation to help you navigate the challenges and changes of midlife so that you can not only survive, but thrive in your second half. Hello, Feminine Roadmappers. It's Gina here, and today we are going to be talking about obstacles, how to go from the obstacles of life, the things that happen to all of us, and move through them to a place of empowerment. Because really, obstacles can be our teachers, and because they happen to all of us, we can utilize them to propel ourselves forward to be the people we want to be and live the lives we want to live. So today, to share in this conversation is a friend of mine, a new friend of mine, Suzanne Bryant. She's Mm -hmm. the creator and founder of yogaiz.com. She is a yoga, meditation, and wellness coach. She works with individuals as well as groups, and she's a documentary filmmaker. So I want to thank you, Suzanne, for coming on the show today. Gina, I'm excited to be here, and this is a wonderful topic that I think everybody can relate to. I think so too. And because the world is so crazy and chaotic, I think it's a very timely message as well. So before we jump into all the meat and potatoes, why don't you share a little bit about your story and what led you to this place of falling in love with yoga and meditation in the way that you have and creating the platform that you have? Sure. So like all of us, we start on one path and things can change. I moved to New York City and I was always a pretty fearless person, traveled the world, and all of a sudden I got a little bit of this thing called anxiety, which is pretty relatable to everyone now. But I didn't recognize myself. I thought, wait, what's happening? Why am I feeling this way? So I did turn to yoga and meditation and mindfulness and a whole lifestyle of wellness, and I overcame it. And that was my sort of, my introduction to it was in 1990, but it really helped me rely on it at that time to overcome anxiety. And so fast forward, many years later, working in journalism at 60 Minutes, I learned that my mom had breast cancer that metastasized to her liver, so it was terminal. And that was the most devastating news that I could experience. And During that time, I moved back to San Francisco to be with her, and I used yoga and meditation to ground me, to be present for her and deal with all the grief and the sadness and fear that was coming up. But I realized, this is really interesting, that anxiety that I had wasn't rearing its head. So I thought, this practice works. So after my mom's passing, I wanted to share this with everyone as much as possible. Because we are all going to face obstacles in our life, whether it's a death of a loved one, uh, a change in a relationship, finances, daily pressure, anxiety, depression. You know, we're human. This is part of the journey. It makes us stronger, but we often don't really want to go through it. (laughs) So I found that this tool is so empowering to any obstacle that comes in your way because it's not other dependent. You do this for yourself. You don't have to turn to anything else in the outer world. You turn inward and you can change that circumstance of energy that's within you and show up in a different way. So realizing how powerful that was for me and wanting to share with people, I decided to make a documentary film called Yoga Is. I was never a filmmaker before. I just had this like desire and I went out and talked to top yogis and um, some famous celebrities that do yoga as well and i'm so grateful it got released with magnolia pictures so we got in uh, amazon itunes netflix barnes and noble whole foods best buy and some key theatrical and that was amazing because what happened is in in opening up and sharing my story of how yoga helped me during the loss of my mother i've got thousands tens of thousands of emails from people sharing how the film had helped them through a difficult time or inspired them and they were asking for more. So although I love teaching individually in groups and is one of my passions, I also had another idea to share the journey of yoga is going forward. And I created a, an annual yoga is online festival where I gathered 
famous luminaries, yoga teachers, wellness experts to share interviews with myself and also to teach a class for the platform. And after three years, we combined it together to a subscription site. So it's really interesting how life is. You think you're going to be on one journey and trajectory, and then an obstacle comes and pushes you in a different direction. So our theme today is about overcoming obstacles, and I know we're going to get deep into it, but just know that these obstacles, which let's face it, nobody really wants to go through these obstacles, but know there's a greater purpose. And if you can surrender into that and realize there's something there through your pain, through your challenge, it helps you to really go through it with a different perception. I can honestly say that the growth in my life has always come from challenges. The person that I am, the vision for this podcast, you know, my coaching business, everything that I do has really come out of what did I learn and how can I help someone else? So that principle of, like you said, going inside, not looking for the thing to dull it, numb it, you know, squash it, but really coming face to face with that thing and figuring out how you can get around it, through it, you know, to the other side, because the joy, the beauty, it all comes from the struggle. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. It's it's so true. It's so true. And these lessons are our greatest teachers for growth. They, Mm -hmm. we call it growing pains for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) And it's interesting because in life we, we, we wish, oh, we just find these times of peace. I remember that when I first got anxiety, I was so embarrassed because I was pretty fearless, travel the world by myself. I'd never had anxiety. And I, I was wondering what was happening because it felt so uncomfortable. And I remember going to Barnes and Noble and buying books on anxiety. And I bought like five books and I went to the sales lady and I said, oh yeah, this is for my friend. You know, I'm just buying her some books. And isn't that funny that we have shame about our um, challenges and actually going through that. Now I have such compassion for people that experience it and I can share my wisdom, which helped me overcome it or somebody that lost a parent or a loved one because I'm a better, I can share, I'm a teacher in that experience and I can have compassion and give comfort. So it's really important to know that these things happen to us so we can support others in life. It gives us a sense of power and not hopelessness, not helplessness. We don't have to be the victim. We are still impacted, but how we choose to perceive it and engage with the reality, if you will, is really where the power lies, right? It's it's recognizing, yes, this sucks, yet I'm going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. It's very true. You know, I think it's really important to experience your pain. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put it under the rug and and deal with it in other ways. I really experienced the pain of losing my mom. I cried every day for a year. I felt it. But us going through it and purging it and getting to the other side, I miss my mom every day. I feel her energy around me every day. I wish that she was here, but... I know that she wanted me to go on and move forward in life and I have her energy with me. But I think what happens in life is either two things. One is that we ignore the symptoms of the pain that we're feeling and then it shows up in other ways and it affects us physically, emotionally, even they talk about dis-ease within our body. Also, the other thing is sometimes we get stuck in the story of our life there where maybe this we had a bad relationship so we're always going to attract bad relationships or maybe we haven't been successful in our life so we're always going to be unsuccessful but that's just not the truth we're here let those experiences teach you what was the lesson and feel your emotions but then find tools and practices to let go of that and grow from it and that's where i love yoga and meditation because it's almost like a sponge and you, you soak up, you know, all the water of your pain and suffering, but then you have a way of releasing it and squeezing it out. And then, well, we're human. New things are going to happen. Or maybe that thing that you're working on is still processing. But you have this tool to each day let go a little bit more and more and more and to come back from the dark to the light 
And it's almost like the force is clearing and you're starting to see things in a different perspective, in a different way. And that gives you hope and that carries on. But just like we have to, you know, take a shower and wash our hair and, you know, clean our cars and all these things, we have to help. We have a responsibility to ourselves to clean out the emotions and what's happening in our body and not stay stuck. And, and again, life is difficult. Life is hard, but it's also magical and beautiful. So when you look back on your deathbed, do you want to say, okay, I stayed stuck in that or did I evolve from it? And I move forward in life and look what happened. And look at even with my pain, I had no idea what was going to happen with making this documentary yoga is could have been like a, you know, a movie for my friends for Christmas, but I felt such a deep passion to help people at that time. And I was so in the pain and I was so raw with what had happened. And I said, this is it. This really helped me so much. I want to give this tool to as many people as possible. And so that emerged out of my pain to something that was empowering because other people could share their journeys with me and go to the other side. And it's so such a blessing when I hear people's hero's journey because you come from one side of the obstacle to the other side with such knowledge and grace. You mentioned early in that thought, the idea of holding space for our emotions. I 150% agree. There is a lot of fear in facing emotion. I think for some people, they're afraid to feel the feelings. I've had people say to me, I'm afraid if I start crying, I'll never stop. It's that idea that you'll be overcome and overwhelmed, overpowered by your emotion. And there may be a moment where it feels like that. But in my experience, when you allow that emotion to exist and you no longer fear it, it removes the power, the negative power of that emotion. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to tap into the actual gift that's in there. And crying, to be completely honest, is so good for your brain and your body and your emotions. It's like that is more clarifying than a good conversation with a friend sometimes. Just a good, long, ugly cry, right? Uh, I can't agree with you more. Actually, it's really actually one of my go-tos too. It's almost like a valve that builds up and it's like you let you turn on the faucet and let it flow. It's so incredible what happens. I, it is one of my go-tos, right? If I'm just overwhelmed, then I cry. I'm like, ah, oh, it releases all these, I think, endorphins, and you just relax. Oxytocin, you're like, oh, I feel really good. I mean, I, I, my mascara is all in the wrong place, but I feel good. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I love what you say about not fearing the fear of what happens, because from somebody that had anxiety in the past and feeling that feeling coming on, and I was fearing the fear oh my gosh, what if it comes up? What's going to happen to me? This is going to be so scary. I'm going to go through that again. But then I realized a few things about that one specifically, that for people that are your listeners who do have anxiety, this is key. It peaks and then it comes down. So you never are going to be at the same intensity point. When I realized that, I could realize, okay, well, I can ride the wave of this and come down. And that helped me during those times. I also want to give a, a key practice that I use for when that comes up in the past. And even now I don't, I don't love flying. <laughs> and so I do two practices. Uh, one is focusing on the breath. It activates the relaxation response. So one practice that you can do is just bring your, your, thumb to the first finger, the second finger, the third finger, and the fourth finger. So inhale to the count of five, and then exhale to the count of five. And you can use even a mantra. I mean, I'm a yogi, so I use mantras. I might say sata nama on the inhale, and then sata nama on the exhale. And that's in my mind, because I'm taking an inhale to the count of five, sata nama, exhale, Sata Nama. Another very simple one I want to talk about anxiety, and I'll go back to what we were talking about before, but is you know, this is a pretty prevalent thing in society, so I just these are coming to mind. I just want to share them. Is that 
This idea that we're, it's just us on this journey. And when we realize, no, we're part of this earth, we're part of something greater than ourselves. And to be able to lean back and feel support of the earth and not know it's just on us, that the universe does have support for us. So I like to visualize my feet going into the ground, into the core of the earth. And I feel and almost clamp down onto the core of the earth with that energy I feel. And then I feel this pink light coming up through the earth, through my feet, all the way through my body, hitting up all of my chakras, all of my energy to the top of my head and fountaining out. So powerful. And I will use it even if like I have to speak somewhere and I'm feeling nervous. It just grounds you. You're grounding into the core of the earth. And you know, the universe, the core of the earth has me, is supporting me. It sounds so easy, but it's so powerful. So those are some things I just wanted to share. But talking about your emotions is that it is so critical to feel those emotions and not fear them because that's part of your journey. And if you're scared and you're turning to other experiences that are unhealthy, maybe shopping or drinking or smoking or whatever, maybe those are not going to help you and they're not going to propel you forward. And everybody's journey specifically was created for them. And you have to realize that you have the strengths to get through this. Otherwise it wouldn't come in your path. And it's going to make you a stronger person on the other side. So not fearing those emotions, moving through them, but having helpful, supportive practices, whether it's talking to a friend, therapist, coach, doing yoga, listening to podcasts like these that help people, whatever it is to know that you're not the only person going through it. This is a universal thing. We're all going to experience probably every single one of these challenges or obstacles that you have in your life, everybody that you know has it in a different way. So okay. knowing that we're universally connected in that way is so critical that we're not alone. Like, for example, if you have anxiety or depression or you lost a loved one, you're not alone and reach out to your community for support. Is that taking initiative in your life to rewrite the stories, identify where you're kind of stuck because our emotions are so strong. They're so powerful, right? They've proven in brain science that if you have a memory and it's charged with emotion, it's like locked and loaded in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. And so it takes feeling those emotions to break those chains. It's like the, the ticket in and the ticket out is to really allow that emotion to exist and honoring that emotion. It's part of our journey. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think what I have found is if you avoid it, it's like the revolving door. It's going to come back until you deal with it, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. that thing is. And that's when you talked about process earlier. I think that's the leaning in to the internal world and saying, okay, I keep having <laughs> this experience or I keep having this emotional yeah. challenge. Then you can begin to kind of go inside and say, is this how I want to live? Like that intention. Mm -hmm. Now we really have no excuse. There are so many resources out there. Like you used to have to go to the library mm -hmm. to get any information. Mm -hmm. And now I can use my phone. I can use my computer. I can call a friend. I can listen to podcasts, you know, blogs, vlogs. I mean, it's almost too much information, right? <laughs> that's true that's true it gets like i don't know who to listen to but i think when you find something you have to give it time to work like you have to kind of dig in and see for me and i wanted to share this as you were talking about things that work for you one of the things i love about yoga the yoga practice that was really kind of a profound thing for me is standing with your feet about hip width apart and feeling all four corners of your foot and just really kind of feeling that strength and slightly bending your knees and lifting your chin a little, getting your shoulders back and just kind of mountain pose, just breathe. It's amazing how the way we position our bodies, how that facilitates emotion. Because if you think about when you're angry, what is your body doing when you're upset, when you're depressed, when you have a negative emotional journey that you're on, what is your body doing? We tend to roll up, close up, 
drop our chin, drop our shoulders, right? Slump almost. We tend to, to tighten up. And so if we can do the opposite of what feels like what we want to do and open up our bodies, even if you lay on the floor, they call it dead man's pose. I'm sure there's a much nicer name for it. But <laughs> when you're laying on the floor, what is it? Shavasana. Oh, well, there you go. Shavasana. <laughs> so much nicer than dead man's pose. But if you picture a dead man pose in a movie <laughs> and you just lay on the floor with your arms to the side and your legs out and let your feet fall open and feel your body just being kind of supported all you have to do is feel you know all you have to do is let it let it flow because it's a lot like waves I think and if we open up our bodies I really firmly believe that we have to physically change the way we're standing and sitting and when we're having those emotions open up somehow so that the, so you can just let it happen. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you tighten up, it makes it worse. That's very true. I love what you say. You know, firstly, about talking about dead man's pose or corpse pose or shavasana, that's actually a very powerful pose and super easy to do because you have to lay there. But what happens is uh, it is sort of what you do at the end of practice because yes. the benefits of the poses rushing in but it's also something that you can do to relieve stress. I know of days that I'm feeling like, like a lot of work on the computer and that, you know, it's not my favorite to be on the computer for hours and hours. And I feel, it starts to feel like, oh, I'm tired or overwhelmed. I might just lay on the floor, close my eyes, lay flat on the wood floor or on my yoga mat, five minutes just breathing, my spine stretches out. It feels so incredible. It's amazing how well it works for me. So I invite all of your listeners to just lay on the floor and just unwind from the day. I do it sometimes several times a day. So this is a very easy yoga pose everybody can do. Right? <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say about yoga is that it's all levels. You know, sometimes we see this Instagram where one's doing all these crazy poses or you have to be, you know, size zero. This is not what yoga is. Yoga is for everybody. And so if yoga interests you, but you're intimidated to get into a class, we'll come into my online site. <laughs> but there's lots of resources online that you can do practice yoga for. And you, you don't even have to go to a class. But if you, you know, if you just take up a practice even 15 or 20 minutes a day, you'll have a powerful experience in your mind, your body, your outlook, and your energy. Because what happens is all the traumas, all the stresses, all the things that we experience in our body get trapped. Our emotions get trapped in the subtle sheets of our body and they stay there and they, they cannot make you feel good and they can create disease and disharmony in your mind, in your relationships. And a lot of times what happens is our scars or they call them subscaras in yoga, they show up in different ways. So maybe somebody said something to you and you showed up really upset. And the person says, wow, I mean, that reaction was overwhelming for what was, you know, the situation. But it's all those scars that are stay staying in your body and weighing on you. And then you're showing up in that way. So we need to be able to clear them. So yoga has this profound effect through the breathing, linking the breath to the movement through the poses to release that energy. That is really what they say is a long all, all the cells in our body and along the spine of our body in the different chakras are different energy vortex centers of our body. And so I would invite people just to practice simple poses. You know, you can even do a yoga class all on the floor. You don't mm -hmm. even have to do the standing poses. It's just a powerful practice. And, you know, meditation is a powerful practice as well. It's interesting because yoga is what the yogis believe that yoga is a preparation for meditation because as westerners we're so busy we have this energy we have all this stuff in our minds so can we almost like cleanse the cells of our body and mind and then prepare to sit for our meditation i was thinking about the word noise when we're in an emotional state when we're going through an obstacle there's a lot of noise in our head you mentioned the memories stored in our bodies. My goodness, I could tell you stories about that. That's how I learned that that's true. 
but it's amazing how because we have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind and your conscious mind might be 10 they say anywhere between 5 to 15 percent but the rest of it's subconscious that's where we've locked and loaded our stories our beliefs our emotionally charged memories that create the responses and the outlook and the perspectives that we have and i call that noise sometimes because when something triggers us like an obstacle comes up those are the first things that our brain goes, oh, this looks familiar. This feels familiar. This is what you need to do. And it, we start to uh, try to get to homeostasis again. And that's why people avoid their emotions. The ironic thing is that's the worst thing that we can do is avoid. The thing about yoga, and that's because I've already said what I feel about avoiding emotions, but the way I want to link it to the idea of yoga is that when you are on the mat. So I have a gal named Adrian. She does yoga with Adrian on YouTube. And when I was looking for some help a few years ago, I found her. And she's very straightforward, which I appreciate. And the one thing that she says is find what feels good. She talks about the mat being a safe place. And that's something that's really stuck with me. So all that noise is happening. And what yoga is, it's, it's really a practice of allowing yourself to have a safe place to sometimes feel sometimes not feel but it's like a protective little place that's just between you your body and your breath where you can give yourself permission 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes and i'm i'm not an instagram yogi i don't stand on my head i would love to but i don't i do simple things that help release this tension in my body and quiet the noise in my mind. Yoga is a tool for me. Flexibility was actually the first reason I started it, but I found that it's a place I can go to just kind of listen to my breath. I don't have to think about anything else. I can just kind of be in that moment. And it always gives me a sense of calm when I'm done. Mm -hmm. It is such a powerful practice. I'm thinking of so many times in my life where I felt challenged in various different ways and even to the point where I'm like this is my refuge right here this three by six foot mat in this moment in this time and what's interesting is that it helps you realize that really all you have is this present moment and then if you can change the perception of your life through this present moment it starts to clear the stress from your body starts to clear the emotion and starts to open you up into new ways. You might have incredible creative thoughts. You know, I've been in class. I'm like, Oh, I just want to write this down. This amazing thought or on a bigger note, it helps you ultimately connect to your true self to connect to let go of all the conditioning of society, of parents, of your own inner critic and expectations and start to truly develop into your own truth. And that's where the empowerment comes. Because when you step into your truth, when you step into your, the person you're supposed to be, that feels so liberating, so freeing, and so empowering. And when you start to continue on that journey, you're going to realize all that the negative thoughts start to let go, the inner criticism starts to let go, and we're human. So we are going to have those with each time that we grow and plateau to these different levels we might have emotions that come up uh you mean we will <laughs> not that's might right. that's right that's right and so you know that you have this tool to come back to again and again because the beauty of this practice is that it shows you you're this beautiful being and you're here for a purpose everything that was created to bring you to this very moment you have a purpose. There's a reason you're here and your time here is also precious. So think about what is it that you want to share with the world, whether you're an amazing mom, amazing grandparent, you volunteer, your job is helping others. What is it about your life that you can help elevate people and be in service? You know, I studied all different types of Eastern religions and it's just fascinating, but ultimately I believe that our path and purpose is to be a refinement of ourselves, to go through the challenges and come to the other side with grace and ease. And ultimately, all of these challenges help us 
to be of service and help others. And it's all interconnected. Think about everything that you do in your life. I mean, from the food that you eat, the people that cultivated, that grew it, that got it to where you have it, to make your smoothie in the morning, to give you energy. That energy helps you focus and create your work and pushes it out into the world. Then that energy affects other people and supports them and maybe has a more positive impact on their families, their relationships, their jobs. We're all helping each other, all interconnected. That's an important thing to remember when we're facing obstacles. Our tendency is to go inside in a negative way. And like you said earlier, think we're alone. But one of the things that I use to kind of recalibrate what the crazy that could be happening in my head when I get tired of a challenge or you just get through one and there's another one, it's kind of like the waves of the ocean. Right, you know, right. you just dive under one, you come up and there's another and you're diving. You're like, when do I get to breathe? Exactly. Right? Just at least, just a little bit, just a little bit of floating. I need a minute. But one of the things that I've utilized, and I think in overcoming obstacles, and what I think is empowering, my body was doing it naturally. I would find myself taking deep breaths or heavy breaths. And my husband would be like, are you okay? And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, you're sighing. And so I found that instinctively, my body knew I need to breathe. Because when we're stressed, when we're facing obstacles, when things are difficult, we tend to retain our breath. Mm -hmm. We tend to shallow our breathing. We tend to not be relaxed. So everything tenses up, even the way that we breathe. And so there's a, like, if you put your hand on your chest, I know you know this, so I'm just, you and I can look at each other, so it's much easier. But if I were to explain this to someone, you put your hand on your chest, just below your clavicle, and you just kind of almost pretend like you're pulling your shoulders apart, you know, just get your shoulders back, exhale, drop them, lift your chin a little bit and literally breathe into your belly, close your eyes. If you do that from that position, 10 good deep breaths. And the only thing you think about is, wow, my breath is interesting when, you know, in through your nose, out through your mouth, like there's several breathing techniques, but that simple one I've had people do that I've coached and it calms the brain down. It gets your central nervous system to relax a little. So then you can think about solutions. But as long as we're in that tense place where our shoulders want to touch in the front, you know, we're so tense. You got to like pull that space open, drop your shoulders, lift your chin a little and just close your eyes and breathe 10 times. You can do it sitting, you can do it laying, you can do it standing. It doesn't matter, but it's scientifically will calm your central nervous system, which is what's reacting to the stress, mm -hmm. anxiety. And so I think when you're overcoming obstacles, to me, the very first thing you got to do is get your breath under control. And that's where yoga, you can use it that way. But you don't, if you don't have time to get on a mat, then just do those 10 breaths. Mm -hmm. cool. And do it as often as you need to. Absolutely. Well, the yogis talk about the breath as pranayama and prana is our vital life force. We could go without food and water for a certain amount of time, but we cannot go without a breath. No, so you're right. When we're feeling overwhelmed or stressed, then our, 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 our body starts to make our breath shallow and in, in the upper chest. Mm -hmm. So if we can bring, if we can bring a count to our breath, not hyperventilate, <laughs> but extend, ease the inhale, extend with grace and ease the exhale. Almost think of like Tai Chi for your breath or waves of the waves rolling in and out. And what happens is again, you will create the relaxation response in your brain. And I also like to realize that we're often shallow breathers. So place your hand on your chest right now on your belly. Where are you breathing in? Most often we're just breathing into the chest. So we want to breathe into the belly, then extend the chest with the belly, and then exhale with the chest and exhale with the belly. Getting that full pranayama, those vital life force through your body. And the yogis did believe that if we can change our breath, we can change our mind for this very reason. We're going to see a different perception, like you said. In the moments of crisis or stress, we're not, we're not going to think straight. So can we get to a practice of coming to a place of calm and then seeing it through different eyes? And maybe you're not available right now. Maybe that breath is just going to calm you to a state 
that's calmer than where you were for what you're facing. But if it's a practice that you take up daily over time, you're going to start to release and see more and more and more and find that solution that is important. And another very powerful practice to use with the breath is such a simple mantra. And I've worked with many people and they've had profound experiences with it, which I actually thought at first, this is so funny. Like it's so simple, but people really respond to it. And it's sitting like we were talking about bringing the breath into the belly, into the chest with those deep breaths, exhaling through the chest, through the belly. But with the inhale saying, let exhale go. Inhale, let exhale go. We're giving ourselves permission to let it go. Mm -hmm. We're so nurturing to other people. We take care of the people we love in our lives and community and people. We need to realize that self-care and nurturing is critical and it's not selfish. We need to take care of ourselves in order to show up present for the people in our lives and in order to move through the obstacles. So if we can take these practices instead of turning to something else. Uh, you know, we, we can have healthy habits to get through stress or we can have unhealthy habits to get through stress. And I think that that one with using the breath and letting go is simple and super effective. Our topic is going from obstacles to empowerment. And, and what we're trying to convey, and I don't know if we've said it perfectly clearly, is the obstacles are there. These are tools that can help you get back to a state of better thinking, better judgment, better emotional state, right? The emotional state, if we can get our emotional states back to a more level thing, that means crying it out, going to the gym and doing a kickboxing class, whatever it takes to work through the emotion, and the whole time recognizing that you know, you do have the ability to figure these things out. The answer may not come right now, but the moment we have to live is right now. And how are we going to show up in that moment? How are we going to live the beauty and the challenge of life, the joys and the pains? Because you and I both know, Suzanne, that if we do not experience pain, we do not know joy. Mm -hmm. So they're the yin and the yang. You have to have the one to know what the other one is. They, they're like pieces of the puzzle. So when I've struggled and suffered through something, when I choose to lean in in a healthy way and use whatever tools will help me cope and get back to level, which is I use breathing a lot. That's something that really helps me. And just quiet meditation, nothing crazy, just kind of thinking about a, just a few minutes. I use an a application called Headspace. And so there's no music or anything. You just kind of, you choose the topic. He talks a little bit and then he leaves you be and he reminds you periodically to stay focused. But if you can do five minutes to 20 minutes, I think is what it is. And it seems like you said, it's so simple, but there's something about the physiology of positioning your body in a way, again, the way you sit, the way you breathe, closing your eyes so your brain quits taking in information and allowing yourself a few minutes to unplug from the noise. So an mm -hmm. obstacle is very overwhelming usually. They can be big or small, but they, depending on our emotional state, it can be a whole lot bigger, right? And so when you found out your mother had cancer, you had already started this practice of yoga and meditation. It's amazing how simple it is. And I'm not even talking about, for some people they get hung up on you know, some yoga practices get very, very spiritual or they get very, very Eastern in there. And some people aren't comfortable with that. But the kind of yoga and meditation that I practice is strictly physical. It's like I don't worry about all of that. I'm trying to position my body, breathe well, and calm my brain. Like, you don't have to spend six months on a mountaintop. <laughs> you just need like five minutes a day to get quiet. Yeah, exactly. That's very true. Like, I think some people really think it has to be all of this. And, and that's another challenge. When we're in obstacles, we should all over ourselves, right? We should do this, we should do that. And that causes stress. If we can reduce the stress during the obstacle, because the obstacle is stress, and just get present with what we're feeling, I think that that's where the empowerment comes. Mm -hmm. 
instead of being a thermometer, we're being a thermostat. We're choosing to set the temperature and say, okay, this really sucks. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do to get myself in a good mental and emotional state? Mm -hmm. And then make decisions. My husband, this is a true story. If I happen to be hormonally imbalanced and it's quite obvious that I'm hormonally imbalanced, <laughs> my husband will say, uh, honey, now is not the time to make a decision. He just reminds me. It's not condescending at all. And I always have to laugh because he's so right. It's like, I so probably good. shouldn't even decide what to eat for dinner because I'm so like, <laughs> out of whack. just like relax for a few days. Most things can wait for an immediate answer. And that's another thing, right? In terms of yeah. obstacles to empowerment is realizing that your timeline, we need to get to what's authentic to our timeline and not feel the pressure to live up to whatever expectation we think there is from other people. Wouldn't you agree on that? Absolutely. Everybody deals with, grief, loss, stress, depression, all these different things of the human condition in different ways and heals in different timelines. And I think the key is, is are you doing something every day that's going to support the healing and the transformation or are you staying stuck in your story? And I completely have compassion and understanding for anybody that's dealing with any obstacle. Because every day it presents something new, you know, and it's a new opportunity to say, okay, here's another obstacle and this is how I'm going to try to deal with it. And not every day is going to be perfect. So be compassionate with yourself if you're not showing up in a way that's like on that path to healing and transformation. Self-compassion is so critical. But if we're being true that we want the outcome, which is to move through this obstacle, and to have more peace in our lives. What are we doing each day to support that journey? And I think that being disciplined in that respect of knowing that the only way I could, if we think about it like this, the only way that I can get to the store and get my green tea is if I get in the car and I drive there. So think about it as simple as that. that if we want to get to that one place, we're going to have to take steps and effort to get there. Otherwise, we can stay stuck. And, you know, this life is precious. So do we want to get stuck in a moment or do we want to move through it? You know, there's times, I think, when maybe we can allow ourselves a moment. Absolutely. Of whining and complaining. I think the key is not to get stuck there. Like, it's okay to be human and really say, this sucks. And give yourself a moment to sit in the suck. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's why we love our girlfriends. <laughs> We're like, okay, right now I have to be somewhere and I'm in terrible traffic in LA and I'm totally stressed. I'm never going to get there. Or, you know, my fiance was such a grump today and I woke up super positive. I did my thing. And, you know, it's also others getting in the way of your happiness, right? <laughs> <laughs> Start those other people. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But that's the interesting thing about it is that then we also have to bring a lot of humor to the situation too. Because you and I are laughing about it. In the moment, it doesn't seem so funny. But then you have to laugh about it later because, I mean, okay, we're talking various degrees. It's not laughable losing somebody that you love. But we're talking about the minor things that show up every single day, Right with PMS or menopause or hormonal shifts or whatever, even, even, and I think that actually is so funny because women, we don't really like that when our husband or partner, he says, Oh, there we go again. That might be happening. And you're like, no, that's not even true at all. <laughs> oh no. I'm, I'm my, I'm always like, good point, honey. That's our, that's my cue to be like, I don't have to make a decision. He's reminding me that nothing's that urgent. I know that's such a, that's such a good partner. That is so amazing that you guys know each other so well. <laughs> that's, that's the key. And actually that's the key to all great relationships, friendships, community, you know, family, husband, wife, partner mm -hmm. is being able to show up and be completely vulnerable in how you are. That's actually very relaxing and it allows you to, to have support to move through those obstacles that are showing up. And you need those people in your life. You need people that love you and support you. And the truth is, 
you know, you only need a few key people in your life. It's nice to have, you know, great community and friends and all that stuff, but you just have need a few key supporters in your life that know you well and that are willing to help you and tell you the truth. And then to have compassion for you when you're suffering and really to hear you and to listen to you. As you're talking about that, I think some people may have difficulty allowing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. other people to join the journey because we may have a story that we're the strong one. I don't have time to be weak, you know, but I think there is a, a vulnerability. Like when we're going through obstacles, I think the tendency is to buck up, you know, suck it up, buttercup, pull up your boots by the straps, you know, in that whole thing. But I think allowing ourselves vulnerability with the right people and allowing people to come alongside of us and the obstacle that's part of the beauty of the journey because we'll do it for our friends, right? As soon as we know they're struggling, what can I do? What do you need? How can I help you? And then we hit an obstacle and we're like, I have to do this. It's on me. You know, I'm going to pull myself up by the bootstraps, but it's like, we need to live in safe, healthy community with other people in order to be empowered. There's something about going through those things in community. Even if that person's not going through it with you, just allowing them to exist in your world and be there for you when you don't have what you feel is the strength to carry on. I think that's a huge part of overcoming obstacles is the community you surround yourself with. It's so key. It's so key. I'm glad we're talking about this because there is, like you said, this emotion of just being strong and going through it or being vulnerable is weak. I'm the strong one, or I show up in different ways for different people. Even some people say, oh, you have such a positive energy and positive nature. So do I have shame if I'm feeling down or is there something wrong? All of these different emotions, uh, that's part of being human. And it's so critical to have these key people in your life. I don't know if I shared this with, with you or not, but I went through breast cancer myself. It was just genetic and I had to have a double mastectomy. And I am so grateful for my fiance that I was able to cry a bunch and share my fears and my sisters and my friends so I could go through it and be strong and know that maybe I'm not super strong to go through the surgery and I'm really scared, but they gave me so much emotion to get through it to the other side. And here I am. It was so scary to go through that tunnel, but here I am on the other side, back to my resilient self. And it took time. It was a journey, but it can be simple things like, you have a fight with somebody, you know, your sister or your partner, and you, you just need to have an outlet to express yourself and know that, yeah, nobody's life is smooth. Problem free. It's so great to be able to release and share your vulnerability and your thoughts and feelings with somebody who you trust and who accepts you. And then you can show up for them in that same way too. And we all have that. And if you don't feel that you have somebody in your life, I bet you do be brave to share your vulnerability. And secondly, be around people that are your tribe, that are your family, that love and support you and know that friendship, support, love is going to be there for sharing the beautiful things that happen in your life and also the challenges. And then they're your cheerleaders to move you through your obstacle. And there's strength in numbers, really, Mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes depending on the obstacle, we really don't have strength. Like we really feel like, like when you found out that your mom had cancer, I'm sure that was like someone unplugged you and you just drained of all energy. Like where do you even begin to process that? And I think in, in your own cancer diagnosis, I think with everything else, it's the same thing. It's one step at a time. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the paces. There's no shortcut through an obstacle. That's, that's very true. The only thing that you can do are these ideas that we're, doing, that we're sharing today, which are internal things to release stress through yoga, through meditation, through community, I mean, externally through community, through friends, through nature, one of the greatest supporters. But right. know that you can get through it. And it, it's, sometimes it seems impossible. Like I... That was, you're right. Going through losing my mom was like the worst thing I can imagine because she's young. She's 57. 
we still have a whole life ahead of us. It was the worst, worst experience, probably of all the things that have happened to me in my life. And I had some dear friends and my sisters uh, and brothers that supported me through that time. And then I was able to support them through other things that happened in their life, even similar things over time. But it's so critical to have these practices. One of the practices that I use, there's two. I use certain forms of worship music because that's a place where if I really can't get it together, like breathing's not working, <laughs> you know, it's not working, I will sometimes just lay down and put on music and allow it to soothe me because music is a powerful tool. You know, it really is. And prayer, you know, if you're a person of faith, prayer is a wonderful thing to do as well. So there's all of these things we can utilize to go through obstacles. And I think it's not like a one and done, right, Suzanne? It's like maybe today that yoga practice, my body just needs the release, right? Maybe I'm feeling triggered in my body, physically feeling and that's when I know, okay, I need to do some yoga because my body's saying to me, I'm at my max. Mm -hmm. So if I just can't get on the mat for 10, 15 minutes and, and allow my emotions and my blood to flow, it, it circulates lots of things, right? <laughs> Circulation of all kinds. And prayer is a regular practice for me. Breathing is a regular practice for me. I think we are a holistic being of mind, body, and spirit. So I think when we're processing through challenges and obstacles we need to tap into each one of those areas and like you said self-care self-compassion really see yourself as a whole person we tend to focus on the problem but i think we uh, we need to kind of look at ourselves and say how is that affecting me physically mentally spiritually emotionally and what do i need to kind of manage so that i don't fall apart in the process so there's kind of a strategies to the obstacle and the self-compassion self-care strategy so that we can be successful in the journey however long that journey happens to take mm -hmm. very very true very true and you know also the thing is if yoga isn't your thing that's totally fine there's other ways for um for you to practice just moving your body when we feel stress in our bodies we need to move it out of our bodies so maybe just go for a walk. Yes. I love walking every single morning. It's one of my things. I, I have to move my body and walk. Um, so just walk. Go for a hike. Walk in your city streets. Just get out. Don't sit there and let those, the cortisol levels and all the negative, you know, energies and chemicals moving through your body. Get that energy moving. Because you have this amazing ability to change the biochemistry in your body in those times through breath but also moving. So just get up and move, whatever it is that makes you happy. And again, try to turn to healthy, you know, habits and support, supportive friends and prayer. If you're not somebody that is prayer is a regular practice, it doesn't have, it can just be the universe. Ask the universe for your support. Like right now, I really need support. And I'm, I'm really can't figure out the answer myself. Can you show me some signs? Can you have the right person show up in my life right now? Can you have something fall into my life that will help me move through this? Show me the next step. It makes you more aware too, because, because you're praying about it and you're meditating on it. It's telling your brain as well. I mean, I believe that God is delivering these things, but it helps us get into alignment with the thing we're asking for. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So if I began to focus on the thing, whether it's finding someone for my podcast or someone that's been through this that can mentor me or whatever, when I begin to focus on that and pray for that and really meditate on that, my brain actually physiologically goes, oh, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. yes, and it, it makes you more able to see it when it comes up because it could be there and you're just not seeing it because you're focused on the, the problem and not like opening up to the solution. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, it's so true. And what's amazing about life, it's so magical because when you're open, guess what happens? The right people show up, the right opportunities show up. And I mean, it's just, I've had magical moments where I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Because 
our minds create our reality. And we've heard all of this stuff, but it is absolutely true. Our thoughts, words, and actions create our reality and create the world we're living in. So if you're not happy with something in your life, you don't have to be stuck. You actually have the opportunity to change it. But focus on the things that you want to change in your life. And I like to use a practice where you're already in that, like I am and I have. But if you keep telling yourself, I don't have this, and I don't have that, and I wish I had this, you're just going to keep repeating those same patterns that got you there. And you need to be able to get that, you know, change the energy, change the thought process. Because I've, you know, our mind is like an obedient dog. It says, oh, so you want that? All right, I'll give that to you. So if you're focusing on your obstacle or your fear, it's just going to keep giving you more of that. So I mean, that's what I like about any type of practice. If whatever gets you to that place, if you're an artist, if you do yoga, if you do meditation, if cooking is your place of, you know, letting go, playing the piano, whatever. Just get to that place where you have space between your thoughts, where you're stepping into the present moment, not the fear of the future or the worries of the past. Be in the present moment. And in that moment, you can have some stillness, some peace, and you can open up your mind to connecting to that energy that can take you to the right place. Can you believe we've talked for an hour already? Wow. Well, we have so much to share. I, I'm not done yet. So. <laughs> Luckily, we can chat. We could actually get together for coffee. We live in the same state, which is wonderful. Exactly. But uh, let's land the plane for today Have, because we've covered so much. And if somebody's in a state of distress or dis-ease or challenge and they're listening to this and there's so many things they could do in your practice of being that coach, that wellness coach, that yoga coach that helps people specifically to give them coping skills, healthy coping skills to help them be more who they're meant to be and overcome these things. Can you give us three things that someone could start and practice and use today? Even if we've talked about it, we've talked for a whole hour. So what could you help people focus on right now? Just three things that they can begin to practice so that they have something in their tool belt to help them overcome the obstacle in their life. Sure. Well, I guess one thing I want to say, one of them is trust the journey. The journey may be painful. It may be challenging. It may make you feel that there's no way to the other side. There's no solution, but trust the journey. This is happening and showing up for you to make you stronger, to be more compassionate to yourself and to others, and ultimately to help you often find your purpose. That's so amazing. Now, does that mean it's your career? Yes, maybe. Or maybe your purpose, you realize that you want to give back and help other people with the same thing, whatever the challenge is that you're going through. So trust the journey, trust the process, journal. I think that's a really powerful thing if you can journal while you're going through it. So you can look back, what were those raw emotions? Because this journey this challenge is going to be part of your life story and helping others. The other thing is about self-caring. Self-caring is not selfish. So doing practices each day that are nurturing you on a mind, body, soul level that will help bring you into a state of calm and relaxation so you can look at life through a different lens, through a different perception. Not the story that you're in of the pain or the challenge or uncertainty, because that's going to keep you stuck. But what are you doing each day that can help you overcome the obstacle and something that's healthy? The other thing is um, realize that, as we talked about before, that growing pains is part of your growth. What I always like to do is realize that this moment that I'm going through right now isn't going to be where I'm at. This actually is an awakening moment to make us realize maybe something in our life isn't working even, right? It could be in a job or a relationship or financial or the way that we actually even deal with stress. This isn't working. So this is a moment of awakening and it's an opportunity for change. So know that if you take steps each day, 
that you will have that change that you're seeking. So it's not a bad thing that's happening. It's an awakening. I love that. It's that opening up ourselves to the possibility of where this difficult road will lead, not fearing it, but trusting it. I really like that because it's so true. We're going to live life anyway. Why not live it with purpose and intention Mm -hmm. and be a part of the outcome instead of just life happening to us? Exactly. And I also want to say, know that you're not alone on your journey. Mm -hmm. Do not compare yourself to other people. When we compare ourselves to other people and think, oh, well, maybe they have it all or they have the life or they have the perfect relationship or the perfect job or the perfect health. Firstly, there's no such thing as perfect. And the truth is everybody's on their own journey of obstacles and that we're universally going through that. So know that you have community in your challenge. And maybe even what I liked about yoga is like we have a community, but whatever you're going through, reach out to a support community in that area, whether it's dealing with a loss of a loved one, somebody that has addiction, somebody that, you know, you have anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, but something where you have support. Community is key. Absolutely key. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with me again today, Suzanne, for opening up the conversation with me while we were at the influencer event in San Diego and for spending that time with me. I really appreciate the connection. I love your gentle and sweet spirit. And I really appreciate the growing relationship that we're developing and that it led to the opportunity to share your message and your heart with a greater audience. Oh, well, thank you, Gina. Likewise, I'm so grateful that our paths cross. As we say, there are no coincidences in life, right? We are, we're being open. And out of all the 2000 people that were there, we connected And I'm so grateful for working with you. And I love what you're doing and sharing this openness and love and all of your wisdom that you share on this podcast. So I I just send so much good love and energy to you and all of your listeners. Thank you. Thank you so much because you are part of the story that's being written. And that is where it's powerful. So today I've been talking with Suzanne Bryant. She's the creator and founder of yogaiz.com. She's a yoga, meditation, and wellness coach that works with individual and group. She's also a documentary filmmaker. And if you are interested in the online program, which, by the way, I'm a part of, and it's amazing, you can head over to www.feminineroadmap.com forward slash episode 114. I will have in the resource section everything that you need to link up and connect to Suzanne and her website. And while you're there, please leave your name and email address and join my tribe. I have a gift for you. Remember that this is a community. This is where we grab a cup of something wonderful with a girlfriend and we have conversations that will help us improve our lives, improve our relationships. And this is an important conversation for us to have with each other. We need each other, ladies. This community is the most powerful tool that you have. Women who can link arms with you and remind you of your value and your worth and remind you to breathe (laughs) and relax and lean into the process because life is going to happen anyway. So how can we do it better? How can we do it more mindfully? How can we find the tools that are going to help us be successful and help us eventually help others to be successful? So I want to thank you for leaning into this conversation today and we'd love to hear from you. Please reach out and let us know what really meant something to you. What have you used that's made a difference? Let us know that these strategies work for you and share them with a friend. I want to thank you again for giving some of your time to Suzanne and I today, for sharing your cup of something wonderful with us, for listening in and being a part of the community here that we're building at Feminine Roadmap and that Suzanne is building over at yogaiz.com. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. And we look forward to continuing this conversation with another amazing guest next week. And until then, my friends, take care. Bye-bye.